Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to PHP Front to Back. I apologize, it's been a while since I did my last episode. Uh, I've just been really busy and uh, I couldn't get to it. So today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna work with object-oriented programming in PHP. All right, so we're gonna create a class. We're going to uh, create methods and, and properties in the class, instantiate objects and so on. All right, so I'm trying out this new FaceTime or, or FaceCam, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I, it, was, it was recommended to me by a few of my subscribers. They suggested that I should do it. Um, one for copyright issues. If you guys have been following me, you know, I've had some issues with um, uh, copyright on my, with my videos. And then another reason is just to be a little more interactive and 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 uh, have it help explain things or help me explain things to you all right so we're just going to give it a shot you guys can let me know if um if you like it if it helps you or if it distracts you or if i'm just too damn ugly to look at uh either way all right so let's go ahead and get into it now we have our php sandbox folder here and i'm going to create a new file and we're going to just save this as oop.php okay object oriented programming and this is only this is the only file that we're going to need for this lesson. All right. Now you might see me glance over to the right. That's because I have my code over here that I'm, uh, my, you know, my reference code. So um, that's what I'm doing if I'm looking to the right. All right. So let's go ahead and create a class. Okay. So we put our PHP tags, and this class is going to be called Person. Okay. So it's going to represent a person object. So in a class, you can have uh, properties, which are basically attributes um, in the form of a variable. And then we also have methods, which are pretty much just functions inside the class. So let's create a couple properties. So let's create name and email. OK, we'll keep it really simple. Now, when you have these properties, you can you could uh, add what's called an axis modifier, and that could be public private or protected. Now public means that we can access this from anywhere at all outside of the class. If we set it to private, we can only access it in this class. And if we set it to protected, we can only access it, access it from this class and then any other classes that extend this one. OK, so hopefully that makes sense so far, but I'm just going to make them public for now. And then this small amount of code here is enough to actually create a person object. Uh, so what we'll do is create a variable, let's say person one, and we'll set that to new and then the class name person. And that's actually in, this is called um, instantiate. OK, we're instantiating a person object. So let's save this and then we're going to go and open up localhost uh, PHP sandbox and OOP.php. Now, notice nothing's happening because all we did was instantiate the, the object. We're not doing anything with it. So since these are public, we can directly access them. So we could go uh, person one name equals and we'll set that to John Doe. OK, so in PHP, when you want to access a property, you, you want to use this um, this arrow, this hyphen and and uh, greater than sign. Um, if you're used to JavaScript, it would be like person dot name. OK, but PHP uses that syntax. So that's setting it. If we save and reload, we're still not getting anything because we're just setting a variable. Basically, uh, if we want to echo it out, we can say echo person one name and reload and we get John Doe. OK, so um, this isn't very good practice. Usually what you want to do when you want to interact with properties is is make them private and then create a public function to reach in and and mess with them change them and so on so that's what we'll do we'll set these to private and let's go ahead and try and run it now and you'll see cannot access private property person name okay so we can't directly access it so what i'll do is just comment those out and then we're going to create a couple methods so these methods are called getters and setters okay so we're going to create one we'll say public function get name and that's going to return this arrow name 
So this is the keyword we use when we want to reference something from within the class. So we can access properties with this as well as other functions. So we could do this get name if we wanted to as well. But so that's just going to return it or get it. Now to set it, we're going to set public function set name. And then that's going to take in the name. And then we're just going to say this name is going to be equal to the name that's passed in. So now we can go down here and take our person one object and we can do set name and pass in John Doe. Okay, so that will set it and then to get it, we'll just echo out person uh, or person one get name. Okay, now if we save that and reload, we get John Doe. Okay, so it's reaching in, grabbing the name and we're echoing it out. And then what I want to do is just create it, create a setter and getter for email as well. So this will be set email. And then this will be get email. All right. Now, you may not want to have to explicitly call this set set name and set email and all that, especially if you're working with a lot of different properties. Um, so what we can do is we can create something called a constructor that is a method that runs when the object is created and you can actually pass things into it and you can do your sets there. So for instance, to create a constructor, we want to do public and uh, public function and double underscore construct. Okay, as of PHP 5, that's what we do. Back in PHP 4, we would have to create a function that matched the name of the class, but we don't do that anymore. So in the construct, this will run when we instantiate the object. So just to show you, let's say echo person created. Okay, and then let's go down here and I'm just going to comment out these two. So basically all we're doing is instantiating this. So let's save and reload. And it says person created because this actually runs when we create the object. All right. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now we can also pass values in to the constructor. So let's say we want to pass in name and email. And then what we want to do is just set them just like we did here. So I'm just going to grab that. And then the email. Okay. And then down here, when we instantiate this person, we want to pass in some values. So we'll pass in John Doe and his email. And then let's go ahead and do the get name. Save that, reload, and we get John Doe. All right, let me just put a line break here. Actually, I should put a line break uh, on the gets as well. So, whoops. All right, so let's reload that, and now they're on separate lines. So. We didn't have to do the set name. We just created the object and passed in the data. Um, now we also have what's called a magic method, a magic property or something like that. Uh, and there's one called class. Okay, so we can actually get the name of the class. So instead of saying person created, let's go ahead and do double underscore class, double underscore, and then just concatenate space created. Okay, if we reload, we get person created because this is this is going to give us the name of the class. All right, so that is uh, the basics of creating a class and properties and methods. Uh, we also have a uh, deconstructor we can do. So if I copy this and then I'm going to just get rid of this stuff and we don't want to pass anything in and let's say class destroyed. 
Okay, so if we save that and reload, cannot redeclare person. Oh, this needs to be deconstruct. Okay, and let's see. Deconstruct. What a friggin' idiot. It's <laughs> destruct. All right, so now person created when we instantiate it, we, we're shooting out the name right here, get name, and then when it's when it's done, we'll get, we get person destroyed. All right, so now what I want to get into is um, inheritance, okay? Because you can have classes that can inherit properties and methods from other classes. So let's go down under the person class. I'm just going to comment all this stuff out. And we're going to create a class called customers. And then we just want to do extends person. Okay, so it's going to extend the person class. And from here, let's say that we want customers to have an extra field. So they'll have a balance. So let's say uh, public. Actually, we'll do private. Private balance okay and then we can have um, a getter and setter for that as well so I'm just gonna grab that and then this will be set balance and we'll say this balance and then get balance All right. Now, as is, we should be able to create a customer. If we say, let's do uh, customer one equals new customer, and we're going to pass in a name and an email. And let's save that and reload class customer not found. Oh, customers. Wait a second. Yeah, that should be customer. No S. Okay, so we get person created, person destroyed. So since it extends person, it's actually uh, taking taking in the name and email, setting it up here. We're getting this created and destroyed. Now, if I want to pass in the balance, let's say 300, that, well, let me just, let's actually just echo out. Um, is it echo out customer one and let's do get oops, balance okay so you can see we're not getting it it's not giving us 300 um, the reason for that is because if we want to be able to, to pass it in here then we need to also create a constructor in the customer class so public function double underscore construct okay and um, we're gonna pass in here the name the email and balance and then we need to call the parent constructor okay so to do that we need to say parent and then this double colon underscore or double underscore construct and then pass in these three things to that as well. All right, and then right under that, let's just do an echo, and we're gonna say a new, uh, a new, and then we'll concatenate class like that, has been created. All right. So now let's go ahead and save and reload and we get a new customer has been created and let's see, get balance, return this balance. Why isn't that? Hmm. Oh, we didn't set it in the, in the constructor. We need to do this just like we did up here in the constructor with name and email. All right, so that should work. Save it, reload, and you can see we get 300. 
Uh, let's actually put a line break right here. All right. So we have our person class, which has a name and email, and then our customer class extends it and adds a balance to it. So that's pretty much it when it, as far as, um, you know, the, the fundamentals of object oriented programming in PHP. Uh, one other thing that I want to show you is uh, the ability to use static properties and static methods. And what that means is that you don't you don't need to instantiate the object to use them. So for instance, let's say for person, uh, we want to do, actually let's do public for now. We'll say public static, and then let's do an age limit property. Okay, so age limit, we can actually set it here. So we'll set the age limit to, uh, I don't know, 40. I'm not even sure what, it, what it's a, a limit for, but we'll set it to 40. Now we should be able to access this property without having to instantiate a person object. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to just comment this out down here. And then I'm going to go right under the person class and we're going to say echo. And then the name of the class person and then this double colon and then the value on uh, the property, which is age limit. So money sign age limit. So let's see what that gives us. We reload and we get 40. Okay, so we're getting the value, even though we didn't even instantiate the person object, uh, it's static. So we can just we can just use it. It just works. Now we can do the same thing with um, methods. So if we were to change this to private static, and let's say we wanted to create a static method to get that value, then down here we'll say public static function and this will be let's say get age limit and then that's just going to return and when we're using um, static properties and static methods we don't use this so we don't do this age limit we use self okay so we do self and instead of an arrow we use the double um, the double colon Okay, so self and then age limit is what we want to return. And then down here to call it, we can just do person get age limit, and that's a function. Save that, reload, and we get 40. Okay, so this is actually, you know what? I want to keep that in there for you guys. So let's keep that and that. All right, so this is static props and method. All right, so that's going to be it, guys, for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and um, please subscribe if you're not already. Please leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't like it. Uh, also, let me know if this, this FaceTime thing helps, FaceTime, FaceTime chat. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. All right. So that's it, guys. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.